That's insane. Good day, dear people. So we're well into the second week, and there's been a few surprises uh, so far. I just witnessed something really, really cool. I was stood here, mouth open, and I ran to get my camera. But when I got back, it was all over. Crows <laughs> uh, test higher for problem solving than chimpanzees, I think. Um, don't quote me on that, but basically they're very intelligent. We stood just here and lifted the bird feeder off. <laughs> It's now on the ground. Anyway, this morning, I came downstairs and I <laughs> I saw the feeder on the floor. I was like, oh god, this is going to start to be a problem. I'm going to have to tie it on or something. There's, there's a crow been doing it. Anyway, I moved around the corner and saw something very unexpected. And to some of you, probably not something you'd be excited about, but for me, I've never actually got a chance to film and photograph this animal. It was a rat. I'm super chuffed because I've got a mammal shop for the first time in, in God knows how long. <laughs> um, I actually find them incredibly cute and really sweet little things. I know I'm probably going to get attacked in the comments for it, but you know I, I, I love wildlife and, and this is an example of something I don't get to see very often, let alone get a good opportunity to photograph and film. Anyway, moving on, we've got a lot more happening this week, or that has happened that I'm yet to tell you about. So let's get to it. So I've got a patch of grass, as you probably know by this point in the video, at the front of my house. Uh, and there is basically three uh, connections into it. There's up the steps and then there's two holes in different points of the hedges. There's one hedge that's been recorded so far. I've managed to get Wait, I just realised. I never actually showed you what happened in the garden last week. Let's rewind. For those of you who didn't watch last week's episode, to summarise, I'm trying to photograph all the wildlife I can from my home, and hopefully encourage and discover some new or previously hidden creatures in the process. Last week I put out a camera trap for a few days at the bottom of my garden. I did get the expected visitors, and some which were a little surprising, like the sparrows which I really wasn't expecting to see on the ground quite so often. And I was lucky enough to get the animal that I was really hoping for, foxes. It was lovely to watch these animals go about their business with no disturbance or any clue at all that I'd later see what they'd been up to. A thought that I was fully lost in when this happened. Sparrow, oh, they're just cleaning up the ants. But to be fair, that would be quite a nice photo if I could rig a setup for that. It looks like the sparrows are coming in every day. What? No way! No way! Yep, a badger. Now, to some of you who see these animals a lot, it's really not going to be that exciting. But to me it was, so let me give you some context. What the actual- Oh my god! I live in a very urban part of the city of Bristol, right next to a main road, and my garden isn't very big at all. It consists pretty much of a tiny patch of grass, a stone path leading up to the door, and a small tree right next to the house. Add to that that I've only ever actually seen a badger once in the wild, and you have a recipe for the unfiltered joy and surprise you see before you. What? That's unreal! That's unreal! So, now we're all caught up, where were we? Uh, and there is basically three uh, 
connections into it. There's up the steps and then there's two holes and different points of the hedges. There's one hedge that's been recorded so far. I've managed to get a badger. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to go back out and put it in the other place, which would possibly be a better place for a photo. So I'm going to take this out and get it all set up and then leave it for another few days while in the meantime I try and build a camera trap. <laughs> By which I mean like a proper a proper setup with a, a DSLR in it. I've got to try and find a way in which to do it and leave it in my front garden with a flash that doesn't get it nicked. Okay, that's set up. Oh, I'm covered in little scratches. That's location two. Set, and now it's a case of waiting probably a week again because I don't want to put my scent um, there. It will take a few a few days for that to dissipate. But watch this space. Now we've got to go and build something. So, we were about to build something, but I don't know if you can see. <laughs> that is a butterfly. I have no idea how that got on me. Oh, beautiful. See why it's well camouflaged. I'm just going to put him back on a leaf. Hopefully hidden away from birds. There you go. I imagine he was hiding in there for the evening. <laughs> The more I took time to watch and absorb the things going on in my tiny gardens, the more I realised how much I'd been missing. The more time I gave them, the more they gave back. Thank you all for watching, but before I go, I just wanted to remind you all of a photography and short film competition that a friend and I have recently set up. Its aim is to encourage us to take photos in our homes and gardens during this period of isolation. We've been working really hard on it and have been lucky enough to receive some top tips and tricks from photographers, videographers and naturalists, like camera op Tom Rowland and naturalist and TV presenter Chris Packham. Not to mention having some amazing judges on board. The closing date for entries is the 8th of June 2020, so if you're watching after that date then unfortunately you can't enter, but our website will still be live so go and check it out. See you in part 3.